This is why the Dallas Cowboys are better than you think. So we're going to be going through that and three other stories in today's video. So make sure to like this video, and if you want more Dallas Cowboys news content like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel by hitting that red button down below. The first story is Dallas Cowboys could trade CeeDee Lamb and has Dallas Cowboys landing star WR. CeeDee Lamb held out of Dallas Cowboys minicamp, accumulating more than $100,000 of fines. The star wide receiver has been seeking a new contract after Justin Jefferson agreed to a $140 million deal with the Minnesota Vikings. The deal reset the wide receiver market, and now Lamb is looking for his deal. But if the Cowboys were unable to reach a deal, what are their options? The Cowboys could theoretically franchise tag Lamb after the season if they do not reach a long-term deal. Outside of a new contract or franchise tag, there is another interesting option. Bleacher Report's Brad Gagnon discussed a handful of trade packages for Lamb, with one including one of the brightest young stars in the league. Gagnon suggested the Cowboys could trade Lamb to the Pittsburgh Steelers for George Pickens, who is entering his third season, and a second-round pick. The article wrote, Pal because Pickens is coming off a 1,000-yard sophomore season, this would be slightly closer to a player-for-player -player deal, with Dallas saving money and gaining some draft capital and Pittsburgh doing everything in its power to get this right. Unloading a future blockbuster deal and taking on a 23-year-old who is still on his rookie deal would be an intriguing option. Last season, Lamb had the best year of his professional career. He led the NFL in receptions with 135 while racking up 1,749 yards and 12 touchdowns. Lamb, who added two rushing touchdowns, earned first-team All-Pro honors and was named to the third Pro Bowl of his career. It's unlikely a trade between the two teams involving such valuable assets would come to fruition, but it is something to think about. Whether it's as starters or backups, the Dallas Cowboys may have to rely heavily on their rookie draft class in 2024. Due to the way the roster is currently constructed and the lack of depth at several positions, the majority of Dallas's rookies could see the field early and often this season. Of the eight players the Dallas Cowboys drafted this year in the draft, a case could be made that nearly all of them have a chance to see playing time early on in their first year in the league. But which ones and what kind of role would they play? With their first four picks, the Dallas Cowboys may have landed themselves a couple of potential starters on both the offensive and defensive side of the ball. Whether that's as rookies or down the road remains to be seen, though. Both Tyler Guyton and Cooper Beebe have the best shot at locking down a starting job as rookies. Guyton will be given every opportunity to replace Tyron Smith at left tackle, and the same opportunity will be given to BB to replace Tyler Biadash as Dallas's new starting center. While Marshawn Neeland and Marist Lufau may not have as clear a path to earn starting jobs as rookies due to the depth ahead of them on the roster, each one could play a significant role early on. Neeland will be tasked to replace the production of both Dorrance Armstrong and Dante Fowler, while Liu Fao will more than likely play a backup role at linebacker. Both, though, have starting potential early on, if needed, because of injury. Dallas's fifth-round pick, cornerback Kalen Carson, looks as if he could play an important role as a backup as a rookie. He has a really good shot at locking down the CB4 spot behind Trevon Diggs, Daron Bland, and Jordan Lewis. If no other outside free agent is added to the mix, he could be forced into a starting role as an injury fill-in. Not to be left out, Ryan Flournoy has been gaining some traction in the WR3 competition already in practice. His play has turned some heads. Even late-round draft picks Nathan Thomas and Justin Rogers have an opportunity to earn a backup role as rookies. It may be a little more difficult for Thomas considering the depth Dallas currently has along the OL. However, it's not out of the question he competes for a backup role. As far as Justin Rogers is concerned, though, the Cowboys' lack of depth at defensive tackle helps his case of not only making the team, but earning playing time early in his rookie season. That, of course, 
all depends on how he performs the remainder of the offseason and whether or not Dallas brings in more defensive tackle help, which they probably will. All in all, it's very reasonable to believe the majority of the Dallas Cowboys 2024 rookie draft class could see the field early and often this season. Whether or not that's a good or bad thing remains to be seen. Whatever the case, it does mean the Cowboys will likely be relying on a lot of their younger players this year. The second story is Cowboys guard Tyler Smith predicted to explode in 2024. Selecting offensive linemen in round one might not win the Dallas Cowboys the flashiest team in the NFL award, but they've been wildly successful when doing so. Tyron Smith, Zach Martin, and Travis Frederick were the first three offensive linemen taken in round one during the Jerry Jones era, and all three were phenomenal. Tyler Smith joined the ranks in 2022 when the Cowboys used the 24th overall selection on the Tulsa product. A left tackle, collegiately, Smith played on the outside as a rookie when Tyron Smith was injured. He then shifted inside last year and excelled. That's why Ryan Fowler of Bleacher Report selected Smith as the guard who will explode in 2024. Tyler Smith lived at left tackle during his days at Tulsa, but a bump inside to left guard last fall has helped him evolve into one of the NFL's most dominant linemen. Fowler took one player at each position with Smith being the lone representative for Dallas. He added that the second-year player was a lockdown pass protector who surrendered just one sack and two quarterback hits. That performance has led to much praise for Smith, who was recently named among the top 25 players under 25. The Cowboys drafted another offensive lineman in round one this year, bringing in Tyler Guyton from Oklahoma. He will be the starter at left tackle, which allows Smith to stay in the same position he played during his Pro Bowl campaign. The Dallas Cowboys are a big market team and yet haven't been up to that standard as of late. Mike McCarthy is holding the Dallas Cowboys back, and it's time they get a big-time coach to lead the team. That coach is Deion Sanders. Since taking over as the head coach, McCarthy has a 42-25 regular season record. It's the postseason success that should be looked at closely. That hasn't been on the same level as the regular season success. McCarthy and the Cowboys are 1-3 in the playoffs. The most recent loss happened against a very young, inexperienced Green Bay Packers team. They were at home with the more talented team and lost 48-32. It is clear this Cowboys team has talent, but McCarthy doesn't know how to get the most out of it. That's why a coach like Sanders would be ideal to get the most out of the roster. A key factor in this turnaround is with the factor of Sanders having played for the Cowboys. The third story is Jake Ferguson has the opportunity to earn his place as a top TE in the NFL in 2024. The Dallas Cowboys 2022 fourth round pick Jake Ferguson has quickly become a fan favorite after he took over the starting tight end job last season. Not only has he become a serious weapon for Dak Prescott, but his tough, gritty attitude is exactly what this team has been missing in recent years. Currently standing at number 11 on Pro Football Network's TE rankings, Ferguson has the opportunity to show the football world that he should sit even higher on that list after 2024. Ferguson had an outstanding season last year with 71 receptions, 761 yards, and five touchdowns in the regular season. But what really stood out to fans was his intensity and passion that he showed on every single play and his commitment to his teammates and to the star. It could be argued that his attitude during the Seattle Seahawks game gave the Cowboys the extra edge that was needed to pull ahead and get the win. Ferguson ran with the opportunity to be the Cowboys' TE1, and now he is so far ahead, it might be impossible for the others to catch up. In an interview on NFL Network after the season ended, he credited the scheme and his relationship with Prescott for his leap from year one to year two. He spent a lot of time learning to fully understand the scheme and how his role fits within it, whether he was the first read or the third read. That also meant making sure he was in sync with Prescott. They spent a lot of time building their relationship on and off the field, so the plays became automatic. All of that hard work really shined on the field on Sundays, and it was a thing of beauty to watch at times. 
There are multiple signature Ferguson plays and many involve leaping over defenders or Prescott threading the ball through defenders to hit Ferguson down the seam. Ferguson was quoted last season saying he would stay with Prescott till the wheels fall off. And in what would be the final game of the season for the Cowboys, the wild card game against the Green Bay Packers, he stood by those exact words. He was one of the only players that showed up to play catching 10 of his 12 targets for 93 yards and three touchdowns in that game. Unfortunately, that wasn't enough to carry the team to the next round of the playoffs. But again, it was his attitude immediately after the game that proved the type of character he is. Next year starts now. So far this offseason, Ferguson has been a man of his word. The work he has already put into his strength and conditioning was praised by Mike McCarthy at the podium at the start of the Cowboys minicamp this past week. 